Hi guys, I'm here at Smart Energy 2024. And for anybody who can't attend, let's have a look what's actually on offer. Come with me. Present by Your Energy Answers. Now, Sonnen over here is actually one of the batteries that initially for a while made them in Australia, but then they've gone back to a model that is built in Germany. Obviously, we're just at the beginning of the show, so it's uh, still filling up. Nice looking unit. Uh, it's about 9.53 kilowatt hours. Sonnen likes to be the Tesla challenger, but at the moment in Australia, Tesla is really the runaway favorite. Uh, another good battery that runs very well is actually um, the Fronius uh, coupled with the BYD. So uh, here we got one of the bigger distributors, Kranich, uh, with pretty well the usual fare. There's Fronius, uh, there's Growwatt, which is a bit of a cheaper model out of China. Fronius has come from uh, Austria. We got an inverter here being in the uh, Solar Edge. And over there again, the Fronius. Um, interestingly enough, um, and the Solar Edge is now coming with a new battery, but uh, interesting enough, uh, the panels are not so featured. And one of the reasons is it's very hard in Australia to actually make money on panels at the moment because the price points are just crazy. So here we do have a few of them, and it's interesting to see where the wattage is ending up now. So we're sitting there at 440 with lots of them. The astrology is 475, but then if you look down the bottom, you realize it's 475 because it's a bigger panel. So it's not necessarily better efficiency. Um, and so we're sitting there this time around at 440. I mean, when I started 20 years ago, we were sitting at 175. So that just gives you an idea. Um, Goodwe, a big inverter manufacturer out of China, has decided to put their own stand, so they're actually having the um, distributors pushing their product, but at the same time they've also decided to come and have their own uh, representation. Hello. Red bag, another battery, so we can really see at the moment that batteries are the big thing. The only issue is a lot of times the price point has still not come down, but we expect in this year something to move because the lithium price has come down a lot. So I would suggest that many more battery sales will come through. Clipsal, now that's interesting. Clipsal was actually in solar, moved out of it, but they've decided now to come into the market. I would suggest that they have a lot of appliances in when it comes to monitoring as well as the smart home when it's going forward because they're part of Schneider Group, which means um, there's in Europe, for example, there are a lot of smart home uh, features now that Schneider is bringing out. Now, there's always sometimes interesting. You go to these stands and you get to a stand and you haven't heard the brand and you actually have no idea what the hell they're doing. So we're looking at this now. So if I look at the screen here, I really don't know what is being built here. So let's find out. Hi, just a silly question. No such thing as a silly question. Oh, thank you, thank you. That, that's very nice to hear from a lady to a bloke. Um, you guys do charging stations? Or we do. Ah, I'm just doing a general walk around of what's on offer. Okay. Why did you think Smart Energy was the right way? Are you looking for installers or what? Um, so we have, um, these are battery um, storage. Right. So they store power. So if you have solar panels or a wind farm or you're a generator of any type, you can store power in our batteries. So we're very aligned to the other exhibitors, but we also do um, vehicle charging. Right, right. Yeah. So, but these are like home storage batteries no. or what? They're, they're commercial storage right. battery, got it, got yeah. It. And is that a, a, a real size one or a, a dummy sample? That's a dummy sample, yeah. yeah. So the real size one actually weighs three and a half ton. Right. Um, it's um, 1,600 metres by 1,500 metres and 2.2 metres high. Um, but it is a very good visual, yeah. yeah. That wouldn't hold much, maybe 20 kilos, uh, 20, 20, 20 kilowatts, yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I kind of, I did think so, but, you know, you can be looking silly when you make assumptions. Oh. But, uh, but I did think this was a dummy. Yeah, yeah. And, and how, what did you say the real thing is? Um, 1,600 by 1,500 by 220, 2 metres, 200 high. Right, yeah. So it'll be and possibly weighing a tonne. Uh, no, three and a half. 3.3 uh, three, three, 3 .3 tonne. 
Right. Yeah. You must have had a special course just to learn all the numbers. Yeah, yeah, I did. I did. <laughs> My mind's constantly going. But this one's even more impressive because this is um, one megawatt. But, but again, yeah. as, a, as a, wouldn't it be amazing if that size is the megawatt nowadays? Do you think we'll get there one day? <laughs> I would like to think so. Look what happened to the phone. Yeah, true. We've now got it in our hand. Yeah. So, who yeah. knows, of who course. Knows? Who knows, yeah. Not, except probably I, not in my lifetime. Except my grandmother, she's still got a landline. But <laughs> <laughs> anyway, really, because I walked in and I said, oh, I have no idea what they're doing, let's find out. You've been very kind to explain. No worries. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you Cheers, very much. Great. Thank you. Bye-bye. Now, Solex, um, inverter manufacturer, has been coming to Australia uh, now obviously also pushing a microinverter. So that's new. I didn't know Solex makes microinverters. So uh, because in the past it was just the normal inverter. Came to Australia, actually very quickly adapted, got a lot of fans, but then um, slowed down a bit. I don't know what people's experience were, why that happened. But interesting to see that they're coming back with the residential and some commercial solution. So back in the market. It'll be interesting to see how many uh, distributors pick up uh, the Solex, but obviously they're also <clears throat> now trying to sell storage solution. I assume that's a dummy again. I mean, I, I can move it, so it's not a real battery. But uh, there is Solex. Always together with a big team. <clears throat> and uh, so it's interesting at Smart Energy in the past we haven't seen EVs displayed so this is the first time I see EVs at uh, Smart Energy and obviously there is the whole energy infrastructure of cars, of batteries, of solar panels and it's kind of slowly coming all together. Uh, another big Chinese manufacturer of um, inverters being SunGrow now they've also put their battery packs with it. So they are modular battery packs, obviously you can see of different sizes, the inverters. They now have a wide range of uh, hybrid inverters. And again, you will see their product with the uh, distributors as well as individually displayed. So it's interesting that SunGrow actually decided uh, to kind of you know take their luck in their own hands. I mean, they are very popular in Australia as a quality built, uh, Chinese inverter, so they have a good reputation. A uh, few issues uh, with the software upgrades where people maybe weren't that happy that they had to do a bit of work to make them work after a while, but in general, very solid product. Um, so it might be interesting to ask a question. Graham. Hi, Hi quick question. Time, yeah. yeah, 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 I'm, I'm the troublemaker. Uh, I'm gonna be next week actually doing a 10 kilowatt single phase unboxing. Yes. I got one in my studio. One of these, yes. well, 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 can you tell me a tiny bit about it? Because so I'm going to have to pretend I know everything when I know nothing. Fun. Well, there's, there's not much to know. It's a single phase yeah. hybrid inverter. Yes. It's got four trackers on it. So you can have four different inputs, is four it? Four different inputs, yes. Yeah. So, so panels you can could have point panels in four different directions right. if you want. Yeah, yeah. 16 amp input, right. so we've increased the input. You can put up to 200 kilo, uh, kilowatts of panels. Up sorry, to 20, 20. Up to 20. 20 sorry. Yeah. 20 kilowatts yeah. of panels. It's going to go 10 kilowatt. 10, uh, that's so a bit oversizing. Yeah. By 200 percent. That's what I meant for <laughs> the 200. And it's capable of whole home backup. Oh, wow, nice. So you can back up the entire house. I, I, I actually do the unboxing. Maybe I can keep it afterwards. It'd be yes. nice to have a hybrid at home. Yes. And then all I need is the battery. See ya. There's Trina. I mean, that's a true steady visitor of these events. I mean, Trina has been in Australia, I would say, since 2007, 2008. It's one of the most popular panels, Chinese made. Price point has come down a lot on panels. Um, and we can see that the uh, wattage that they're advertising, remember we saw before 440, they're claiming now a 455. Um, they also had a lot of local a case study, so Trina has been quite popular uh, with uh, some of the larger places. Uh, Leichhardt Shopping Centre, um, Aldi supermarkets have been using Trina, so it is a very popular and well-known panel in Australia. Um, and as it happens with a lot of the panel manufacturers, they're now moving into batteries. Um, some of the cell manufacturers moving into modules. So 
they are all trying to fix up the whole infrastructure and build a number of them, including commercial storage, which is advertised out there. There's RSC. RSC is a panel made in Singapore. It is uh, slightly, so they're claiming now they're going to get with the new Alpha Pure up to 470. But you've got to always be careful uh, what is the footprint because I can claim a big number if my panel is twice the size, but I believe the Alpha Pure X will be uh, pretty well the standard residential size at about 21, 22 kilos. SMA, again an inverter manufacturer, uh, used to be number one in Australia in uh, 2007, 8, 9, 10 lost a little bit of gloss mainly to Fronius, aiming to come back, um, very popular in the commercial space. We can have a look over there. They've got the Sunny Central Storage, which is really the commercial inverters. Um, and again, you will see that product in a lot of distributors' uh, display booths as well. So it's interesting that the um, distributors are showing the product, but then the manufacturers have decided to invest in their own stand as well. Now this is a long ongoing um, player in the racking market, Schleder, a German company, um, pushed their manufacturing now but to China like many others, but the, kept the German engineering and the quality. And they are now aiming to get a, quite a bit of market share back in Australia with a system that they claim can up to 20-30% save time on the roof for the install because a lot of times it is a click-in system. It's not actually a system where you have to spend time to screw it all together. And they also got a wide range now from tilt frames through to normal residential. They're coming in a kit. Um, so Schleder is really um, aiming to grab a bit of Australian market share and I believe that these come with a 25-year warranty. Hello, what's the warranty on your uh, racking nowadays? 25 years for a rooftop warranty, Marcus. How are you? Good, 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 good. Um, for 50 bucks I say nice things about Schleder, but uh, I know you won't spend that much so I'm moving on. Kidding. There's only nice Love things to say Love about your hat. Thank you, thank you. That's now, I hat. just told people that you guys coming in with a gusto, take a bit of Australian market share, that's the aim. Um, trying to save time on the roof with the install time and with the heat nowadays, being shorter on the roof is a positive thing. Absolutely. So, a lot of people go and check out Schleder. Thank you. No problems. Have a good day. Thank you. Wow, there's a baby. So, this is interesting. We've now got a new manufacturer entering the Australian market. And normally, a Chinese panel come new in the Australian market, they're coming and they're going and they're coming and they're going. But AECO might be a bit of a difference because they are actually being a cell manufacturer and a wafer manufacturer, polysilicon, they did the whole chain and their cells were actually sold to the main players, the Jinkos, the Trinas, etc. But they've now decided to also move into module manufacturing, whereby they're using the back contact. Back contact, that's what SunPower is doing, what LG Neon R's were doing. They're usually the highest efficient uh, panels. And in this case, they're using their, cell, their unique cells that they're making specifically for their module. And they're claiming they commercially now can get up to 24% efficiency. So, um, and their residential panel, I had a look at it. One of them does look bloody sexy. So come with me and look at sexy panel. So this is their Neostar. So, um, I mean, it's a very nice panel if you're looking for a SMIC situation. And what I noticed is, you know how normally when you have a black, you, you move your fingers along and you get all the dirt and all that? This new model actually, but after the install, it doesn't look like dog's balls. It actually, you don't get all those greasy bits. So that's quite unique and that. And a 23.1% efficiency 460 at a full black, that would be possibly a 470 in a normal panel. So this is possibly the highest efficient full black panel on the Australian market. And if they can get that at a reasonable price point, then you've got a high efficient module from a reputable manufacturer who does the full integration at a decent price point. So they'd be interesting to watch what they're going to do in the market.
So we've got a 630 with a 23.9% efficiency as a commercial panel. That can save time in installing systems because you simply get more bang for buck. Now, some of these modules have a 15-year uh, product warranty, uh, but also some of them have 25 when it comes to the residential product. Now, what do we got else here? We got an Australian manufacturer, which is a rare occasion, unfortunately, in this industry, but we got an Australian made uh, module here. But you see, when you come to the wattage, you are a little bit below what the market is offering right now. Um, but then you would support Australian manufacturing. So uh, Tinder Solar, uh, good to see that we have that one manufacturer in Australia that is still making panels coming physically to the show. The truth is nevertheless that there are some ingredients in this particular module that would be built overseas and most likely the cells are coming from China but we're still uh, I believe building this module in Adelaide and we want to support local manufacturing. So it's good to see that Tinder feels comfortable to come to uh, a show like this to display themselves and you know some end customers that might be the right reason why they want to uh, buy a module because it's Australian made. And they're also interestingly now notice they've gone to N-Type. So uh, they're offering an N-Type Topcon. Uh, again, used to be polysilicon and then standard mono. So uh, N-Type like Sunpay and LG used to do is now really everybody has it. Now here we're at the Fronia stand. Again, the, uh, them and SunGrow and GrowWatt would possibly fight for the number one position. Uh, very reliable inverters, um, good backup support uh, in general. So uh, got people swear by them and others feel, you know, price point wise, there's other models. I'm not gonna judge that, but uh, you go with the Fronius, you'll be doing well. Big distributor here, um, One Stop Warehouse. Um, got some representative from SolarEdge right in the middle here. Um, obviously, it's one of the products they carry, and that's usually the situation with distributors. They, they offer Canadian solar here. You've got, now this is interesting, I haven't seen, all oh right, that's the new Goodwe series with a hybrid inverter. And again, you see the whole infrastructure is coming through now. So Goodwe is now trying to sell you a car charger. They want to sell you the inverter. They want to sell you the battery. Um, and from that perspective, you know, maybe down the track, even there will be a panel offered, that'll be a batched Goodwill panel so you could buy the whole brand in one go. And where the individual manufacturers, um, like uh, just making inverters, they might in the long run find that it's gonna be difficult to compete when somebody can offer the whole suite. So, yep, one stop warehouse, uh, do you have branches all around Australia, um, quite popular. Um, now, it's interesting, so they do offer the LG um, Energy Solutions battery. Uh, unfortunately, LG Energy had to have a big recall on some of their products. Uh, they have um, recompensated the end customers for that, so they have done the right thing, and that's the stuff with new technology. You know, you do sometimes have little hiccups, um, but it's a nice looking battery there. I mean, it's quite con uh, compact. Um, obviously this is a dummy because I can even move the bloody thing normally you couldn't carry it and now right opposite the LG Chem uh, or LG Energy Solutions how they're called now we've actually got uh, LG Energy Solutions themselves now as I said uh, it was pretty well the number two battery in Australia gave Tesla a bit of run for their money but um, then they had the recall issue and so that actually has dampened the enthusiasm for that particular battery a little bit. But uh, they're back with a vengeance. It's a big company, LG, so they will be able to handle that. And obviously they're aiming to innovate, offering now a uh, inverter solution as well. So again, started with a battery, now battery and uh, inverter as one, and using a big brand to aim to win the trust of the customer. Again, one of the big distributors here, Solar Juice. Uh, hello, hello, hello. offering, hey, offering uh, here the Sun Grow, the SMA as we've seen before, got the um, open solar software to order products and here what are they offering in the panel space, they're pushing the Trina, they're pushing the RSC, 
So these are two major brands. Um, they got Enphase here. Again, um, a good micro-inverter solution, possibly winning the market share at the moment in the little race with uh, SolarEdge uh, coming around. Got the Fronius here. But you see, none of the products are really coming through that is a brand new, something that's completely blowing everything out of the water. Except I do believe that SolarJuice has also been appointed as the distributor for the iEco model. So let's have a look. And here we are. I did get that right. And it is a bloody sexy looking panel. Good day, guys. What do you think about the look of the panel? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> Mate, it definitely looks a little bit better than the high it's mark. Nice. It's, it's nice looking, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And it's a 450, so that's for a black, a bloody good efficiency, isn't it? <laughs> it is, mate. It's not bad, eh? I mean, when we built the Neon R like that, we charged a dollar nine for this baby. Yeah. Same technology. I think this is a bit less. <laughs> My gut feeling it's got a three in front. You reckon? Yeah. yeah. Ask the boys right here, mate. You'll get, you'll get a firm answer. <laughs> Why are you guys here today? Uh, we're, just, just, we're just learning, mate. Yeah, we're trainers. <laughs> we're just uh, so, keep, yeah, keeping our, up with market trends, boss mate. Over here is a big boss, so right, right, right. Yeah, where, you're, where you're prestige solar, yeah, is it? Mackay, prestige so. renewables, yeah. yeah. Right. Where are you physically from? Uh, South East Queensland. Oh, um, right. We work, up, we work up in Mackay and Townsville area, but we're in the process of moving up there. Right, got it's got too, it. too much work, mate. So, <laughs> what, too much work? Too much work, yeah. You guys got too much work? Yeah, bloody yeah. Mate, and and, and you guys got to be tough because going in a roof on your bloody area, it's damn hot, isn't it? It's hot even not in the outside of the roof, it's hot, mate, let alone inside the roof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so you start at 4 o'clock, is it? 4 p.m. Yeah. That's I mean, the bar no, opens, no. no. <laughs> I mean, 4 a.m. I've heard some people get up as early as 4 a.m. on a really hot summer's yeah. day, and by 8 o'clock they knock off for a while. Well, we get a lot of people complain that the solar panels aren't working at 6 a.m., but it's nearly 40 degrees. So we've got to try and answer those questions. So, <laughs> so it's all about the angle of the sun, mate. Fair. That's a chance to sell a battery. You're right. You're right. All right. No worries. Thanks. See ya. All right. We've got an interesting. We've got many more cars now at these shows, which we didn't have before. Are you responsible for the fonts? Yes. You're from the fonts. Why did you think the smart energy event was the right uh, right area to sell the fonts? I mean, I don't see many installers putting the panels on the back of this. Uh, look, I think it's good, good event, good exposure where a lot of different businesses. I mean, like a lot of people that actually like work in the industries, mm. they're even customers of ours. Right. Right. If you look, like, let's say you work for like an EV charging company or like solar companies, oftentimes those people that work in those businesses, they're interested in you know, electrifying their commute. So I think any any event that's kind of like promoting renewables mm. is like a good a good fit. I used to have a Vespa 250. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It does bring back nostalgic memories. Yes. Um, so what's the range of this little baby? Yeah, look, um, this one can go 130 kilometers urban riding range. Right. And in terms of top speed, we're looking at 90 to 95 top speed. So if you're used to Vespa, you're probably compared with the 150 Primavera. Yeah, you that's probably like um like the if you just think of the size, you know, like the how quick it is off the mark. Um, a lot of people like that, you know, ride 150 Primavera Sprints, Piaggios, uh, Lambrettas, you know, like anyone that's kind of like interested in those Italian style scooters. I mean, anybody who wants to be trendy. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I mean, like that's the cool thing, right? You can have yeah. you can have performance, style, and electric with fonts. Okay. Um, if you want me to make a really sexy video for you and mm -hmm. have a spare fonts, give me a call. <laughs> Thank you. What was your name? Marcus. Marcus. No, very nice to meet you, Marcus. <laughs> no worries. Schönen Tag dir noch. All right. We're moving through. Bluetti. So they have actually raised money on the market. And these are basically batteries that you can take along for your camping trip or if you have an EV and you want to quickly charge it. But I believe they're also now moving into the residential market, offering an inverter and a battery solution. So it'd be interesting to see how that flies. So it's interesting also, we've got one of the big brands in batteries here and obviously cars, Tesla, I mean, everybody knows and the Tesla stands always look a bit sexy and the two batteries there. There is a Tesla um, Powerwall number three coming and they got the car. I assume that's a new car. Um, always quite um, 
sparkling kind of stand. So it's kind of you know interesting to see that Tesla actually felt being here with the car and the battery to show the integration of both products. Um, that's a that's a good win for the Smart Energy Council to get them to um, exhibit it here. And so that's the Powerwall 3, yes, third model. So that's got an inverter built in, uh, still looking sexy. So lots of battery type material, but compared to let's say last year, where there are many, many new batteries coming, we haven't got like a breakthrough where there's suddenly a half price battery coming through or anything like that. I store, right, right. So this is heat pump here. So this is the first heat pump I've seen at the market. Carl Jensen is a um, institution in the industry. Hello, Carl. You're selling the heat pump now, is it? Sure am. You're full of hot water. That's exactly right. <laughs> full of hot water. I would have gone with hot air, but... Uh... <laughs> not, not with Carl. You always say nice things to Carl, because if you don't, you do it later on, like a couple of days later, you think that wasn't a good idea. It finds a way to come back, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, it bites you very much in the bum, you know? <laughs> That's Are you why. enjoying the show, Marcus? I do so far, and I just noticed that you're the only ones that are offering a heat pump, uh -huh. uh, which obviously now plugs in very nicely into the solar battery EV charging infrastructure. So I'm actually surprised there weren't any more of those because it's obviously an ideal product to fit with solar. It is a really, really cost-effective energy storage device for people to add to their homes. Mm. Um, so a heat pump, hot water, uh, typically saves well stores 14 kilowatt hours worth of energy as heat mm. and everybody uses their hot water every day to have a shower so uh, it's a great complementary technology and the solar industry has really embraced it as something else that they can add to their product offerings. Yeah, no, I, I do know that some solar retailers have added heat pumps now to their offering and uh, because if you have the excess solar and now you get pretty crappy money for it, um, yeah. the, the heat pump is called the poor man's battery, isn't it, really? Uh, I mean, maybe in a, in a, I should be really all positive about this. No, no, I agree. <laughs> I agree, 100%. Um, so some crazy numbers for you, Marcus. There's uh, 1.6 million uh, solar water heaters in Australia. That yeah. includes heat pump and solar thermal on the roof. Um, but there's 10 million gas and electric uh, hot water services in Australia. So if a gas hot water service uses five kilos worth of CO2 more than a heat pump and an electric hot water service uses 10 kilograms of CO2 more than a heat pump, average is seven and a half in the middle times 10 million, seven and a half kilos times 10 million houses every day. That's a lot of emissions. So right, right. You, you wouldn't be in the uh, hot water heat pump sales business, would you? <laughs> I really appreciate it and uh, good luck because you're, you're kind of the only good looking girl on your product on the stand so you should get a lot of fans. All right, mate. See ya. Another big uh, distributor supply partner, supply partner is trying to differentiate themselves a little bit with some of the engineering work they're trying to support their partners with. Hello. Good day, mate. I'm just uh, saying Marcus. good day. Oh, nice to see you Simon. Um, just saying really nice things about your stand. Thank you, mate. We've gone for a whole different approach this year, so we're 100% focused on commercial energy storage. So we're doing a really different approach this year. We're trying to help companies move into commercial energy storage. So we're actually doing a feasibility service now. We've partnered with a software provider. We can actually get the interval data and actually help people build a return on investment analysis for commercial energy storage solutions. So we're kind of helping lead the industry into commercial energy storage future. Right, right. And here... I've just met him here and he had the full spiel, straight ready. Did you wait for me, did you? <laughs> mate, that, I've got that pitch down like you wouldn't believe, mate. So, no, no, we're trying to help the industry. Years ago, we helped a lot of people move into commercial solar. Mm. So we used the PV cell software and taught people how to match a load profile, um, and which seemed quite simple now I look back at it. Commercial storage is a very complex area. You've got behind the meter and in front of the meter opportunities. Um, doing the return on investment analysis for a commercial battery solution is a whole different kettle of fish than working on a uh, commercial PV system. So we're trying to help people come into that space and hopefully we can help the industry continue to evolve. Look, it's a tough game as a distributor. Making money out of panels is a really special art. Mm. And if you find a new flag to wave that people get attracted to, good idea. Exactly, mate. Thanks, Marcus. Thank Cheers, you. Mate. Cheers. Thank you. Bye. Okay, now we're here BYD. I mean, 
many of you would have possibly heard about the BYD uh, cars. Um, they actually started with batteries and moved into the car space uh, and now make only electric cars and have a, a reliable battery. It is a Chinese-made product, but uh, in terms of the uh, popularity in Australia, it goes very well with the Fronius hybrid uh, inverter. And uh, we've actually interviewed them last year. They are aiming to increase the density of their product. Uh, they're using a modular product, so BYD is sitting here. We'll go just to the last aisle now. So look, this event, is it's got a decent size, but if you've ever been to anywhere like Smeg in China or so, where they have 26 halls of panels and inverters, I mean, it's just unbelievable. So it's a decent size event for Australia. We've just seen Jinko before. G'day. How come uh, you're with some distributors? How come you decided to do your own stand as well? Well, we do see the value in just making the connection directly with the installers, Marcus, and you've always been a big advocate of that, of course. Um, so it gives us the opportunity to talk to people directly. We're always busy, people on the roof, we're on the road. We don't get much of a chance, actually. Mm. So that's why we do that, and we see a lot of value in being able to touch and feel and see what's coming and plan for the future, mm. which sometimes you're not aware what's coming down the line. The distributors are busy too. Now you can see it here in the flesh. When it comes to the distributors, I've noticed a lot of them put the battery right up front because there's probably a bit more margin in the batteries because panels have become very affordable. I mean, the production capacity has just exploded yeah. and now I hear prices that, you know, you wouldn't have trimmed them. I start selling at $6 a watt. Wow. We're now looking at a 20th yeah. of price point type of thing, which means it's good for the end consumer. I mean, really, you guys manufacture made solar accessible to Australia. Yes. But how can you still make money at those price points? Well, there is a question that whether the current prices are viable for the long term. Mm. Uh, but there's all sorts of factors at play, right? Too much stock perhaps in Europe. That has pretty much gone away. Um, we're now working through the last dribs of that sort of a stock. I think you'll see the price stabilise from this point onwards. Um, what's going to be interesting is people can do new things with solar. The solar is so cheap that you can think outside the square. It's possibly cheaper to do a carport with solar than it is with a metal roof. Maybe that will happen for other applications, like maybe you can imagine a fence or maybe you can imagine a walkway, a covered walkway, is cheaper to do with solar when you consider the output energy and the uh, fact that the panels are cheap like you've, you've pointed out. So we think there'll be a lot of applications that pop up to use the very uh, affordable solar panels that we're seeing now. So as we are in the last aisle, there are some brands that I haven't heard before. So we got hot water there, second hot water stand. Um, so as I said, the, the way is really combine batteries, combine the panels, move into hot water. So uh, is this a heat pump technology you guys selling? Yes. Yeah. Right. Yes. So, you, so you're kind of the second heat pump here because I saw the ice store. Yeah. And I call the heat pumps the poor man's battery. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you call them that? Well, because when you do export, a lot of people are really cranky. They're only getting three cents or four cents. Yeah. And so they're looking for something, but if they have to buy a battery, I mean, let's make it a Tesla. It's, I don't know, 13, 14, 15, 16. Yeah. yeah. Um, your heat pump wouldn't be 14, 15, 16,000, would it? No, no. no. no so no that's why either. if I'm a little bit poorer and I can't afford a battery, yeah, I'm not looking for my export, then yeah. I go with a heat pump. That's right, that's right. And so you can connect ours up with an energy monitor that we have, which detects any time that you're exporting and um, any time that you export, your, your heat pump will turn on and, and run for free. How many litres in this little baby? Uh, I've got three options. We've got a 220 litre, a 270 and a 320. Right, right. Yeah. And how many litres per hour can this baby generate of hot water? About about 60 litres an hour with an ambient temperature of about 20 degrees. Right, so if you have four teenage daughters, you need the biggest unit. Yes, you, need the, you probably need two or three of the biggest units, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. Actually, and it could be also sons. We don't want to, you know, kind yeah. of <laughs> any gender available for teenagers using a lot of showers. So you're trying to get installers who are normally do solar to be interested in your product and add it to the portfolio. Is that the reason you're here? Yeah, I think that heat pumps are probably the natural step for a lot of solar companies to, to move into. Um, I mean, as you were saying, it, it, it complements solar very well. Mm. Um, our, our system in particular works with solar very well through integration with our energy monitoring devices. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's through solar companies, uh, electrical plumbing companies, and then uh, we've also got uh, deep background in the energy efficiency scheme. So we partner with a lot of uh, servicing companies who uh, contract out to electrical 
and, and plumbing companies to install these as well. All right. Well, look, I wish you good luck Thank and meeting many much. solar retailers who are interested in your product. Yes, for sure. Thank Cheers. You. Great. Thank you. Guys, that's the hot water product here, the heat pump. As you can see, inverters, panels, um, hot water systems, uh, smart energy has it all. Um, it is interesting. I would say we haven't seen the product that is a game changer this year. Uh, the IECO panel with the high efficiency, yes, a good product. Uh, some of the uh, batteries and hybrid inverters coming through now, again, makes it possibly easier for the installer to get a battery uh, installed a bit faster. So for that, uh, if you didn't make it to smart energy, at least you get an idea of what was here. See you later. Ciao, ciao. Want more Energy Answered? Visit yourenergyanswers.com for quality energy products, tools and calculators, and find your quality local installers. Please support the channel by liking the video, hit that subscribe button, and ring the bell, and check out all our other videos. You're still here? I'll see you next time. Bye.